Welcome to the channel. My name is Franco and in the workshop today I'll be installing a set of front mounted skid shoes and a drift breaker kit on my Honda snowblower. The machine I have is a 2017 HSS 1332 ATD. This machine from the factory only comes with rear mounted skid shoes. When adjusted properly these work just fine but today I'm going to explain how a front mounted set in conjunction with a rear mounted set is going to be a good idea and how it's going to further protect your machine. All right, so let's go check it out. So here is Honda's commercial grade skid shoe. You have the skid shoe itself and you have a spacer plate. And you have two bolts that come with it. Now I had these on my previous generation HS 1332 TAS. And when I sold the machine I took these off. Anticipating that I was going to put them on this new machine. Like I am today. So when you first get these, they're pretty thick because of them being the commercial grade skid shoe. So when they're brand new, they're about 540 thousandths. So after using them for three years or so, it looks like they got worn down to 417 thousandths. These were very simple to install on my previous generation Honda machine. They simply attached right to the side. There was already a welded nut on the inside of the housing. So all I had to do was use the bolt that was provided and screw it right into the housing. This newer machine that I'm installing it on does not have a welded nut. So that means I have to um, supply my own washer and nut for the back side. The current housing I have on the HSS has a through hole only. I do in the future want to replace all the hardware with stainless steel hardware, but right now uh, the stuff I have here is just fine. So I attach the spacer plate to the inside of the skid shoe. That way it provides better clearance for drainage on the inside face of the skid shoe, as well as a larger bearing surface once bolted up against the auger housing. So if you're wondering why these things look brand new, it's because I repainted them. After being on the machine for three to four years, they got all chipped up, especially along the side here, and um, they started to rust a little bit. So I went ahead and prepped them, and I repainted them. That way I'll get them ready for the new machine. So next is the drift breaker kit that I chose for the machine. So this drift breaker kit I had on my previous HS 1332, and it worked great. And you might be saying, well, that doesn't look like the Honda Drift Breaker Kit. Well, you're right, because it's a Husqvarna Drift Breaker Kit. So the reason why I chose the Husqvarna Kit over the Honda one is because the Honda one, you need tools to put on and off the machine. The Husqvarna Kit, you don't. You use basically wing nuts to loosen this up, and then you can tuck this out of the way, you know, on the machine itself. You don't need to leave it in the upright position the whole time. It came with these wing nuts, okay, and a supplied bolt and a white nylon washer. I added this rubber washer uh, for extra protection on the inside of the auger housing. It did not come with a reflector strip. This is something that I added on myself just to have an extra level of safety when I'm out in the road out towards the front of the driveway. So it's extremely rare when I actually need to use this on the machine. I usually keep it off the machine because I don't want the added bulk, okay? But it is extremely good to have just in case you need it. All I have to do is just unscrew these wing nuts and put it right on the machine. It takes literally a minute or less to do that. So I'm really happy with this Husqvarna Drift Breaker Kit. 
Like I said, you can unscrew this thing while it's still attached to the machine and tuck it down out of the way. This is excellent if you're working around vehicles because if you have a fixed uh, drift breaker kit and you're working around a vehicle, managing around a vehicle, and the thing is in an upright position the whole time, and you go to swing your snowblower while you're next to a vehicle, well, guess what? There's an extremely good chance that you're gonna end up scratching that vehicle. So this is the reason why I chose this model right here. So there has been situations with even with this kit where I've come close to scratching my truck because I got so close to it and you have no room for, for error when you have uh, you know, almost a two foot blade sticking out of your, your snowblower and you're trying to swing around a vehicle. So you have to be extremely careful or just, like I said, unscrew them and tuck them out of the way while you're working around a vehicle. But like I said, I usually keep them off the machine until I really need them. So on my previous HS1332, I had these commercial grade skid shoes installed on the back side of the housing. And then the ones that came with the machine, I actually installed on the front of the auger housing. But since Honda changed the mounting system on the back side of this machine, I can no longer install this type of skid shoe on the back side. So today this is going to be going right on the front of the auger housing. So what I did was loosely install the skid shoes on the front housing. Then I went and picked up on the handlebars and I pressed on the height adjust lever to put the machine in that dig in mode or that negative rake mode. That way these skids will bottom out only when it's in that mode. I only want it in that dig in mode that it's touching because in the normal operation of snow blowing where the housing is just coasting along the ground in the, the float position, I don't want these skids doing any work. Okay, I want all the work to be done by the rear skids. These skids are just to protect the housing and the serrated auger itself from damage. I will show you a close up of the serrated auger and what I'm talking about in just a few moments. But next I will install the drift breaker kit on the machine.
So you can adjust this any which way you want. You can have it fully extended, or you can have it partially extended, or you can have it tucked in all the way. One thing note mentioning is that these wing nuts do stick out past the blade of the drift breaker. So you have to be careful. Uh, it only sticks out about like, you know, I would say like a, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. But it, it's enough where it would matter if you were to come up against something, you would end up scraping on the wing nuts first. But this is great. I mean, you can, you can just unscrew this thing with your gloves and this thing will tuck right down. And you can go along your business. If, and then as soon as you need it, and if you're doing a, a certain cut or a certain pass on your driveway or around the house, and it's a taller drift, all you have to do is loosen this thing up and then bring it back up. And now you can cut that drift. So now I'm going to talk about why these skid shoes are a good idea and how they prevent the machine from being damaged. So this machine here has a serrated auger. This is because it can actually chew on hard packed snow and ice and break it up and uh, discharge it through the chute. It is also very close to the ground even when properly adjusted. A lot of other snow blowers have a, a big gap here and that's because, you know, that's how they're designed. But the Honda is actually sitting a little bit lower and because I adjusted it a little bit lower as well, the auger itself sits about 3 8 off the ground when it's in that neutral or float position, which is perfect because I wanted to have that ability to chew on hard packed snow from like say tire tracks that have been compacted down. It's perfect for that. So these skids right here in the front that I just installed are only for an extra safety measure. Just so my auger and my housing do not contact the ground. That's why you saw me pull up on the handlebars and then tighten them up in that dig in mode. In the normal float position, these will not touch the ground unless my rear skids and the scraper bar wear down to the point where these will now touch and give me extra protection to make sure I don't hit the, the serrated auger against my asphalt or say a curb or anything that's gonna be protruding um, from a flat surface. This will give me extra insurance and extra time to notice that my rear skids are worn out and my scraper bar is worn out. So that's the reason why I installed them and they're just floating in the normal position. So what happens when these machines get really used and abused? No one changes out the skids or the scraper bar and then what happens is now that short distance between the ground and the, and the serrated auger become almost nothing and then it starts grinding into the auger itself and you start losing all these teeth that are made to chew on hard packed snow. So in order to prevent that, this is why I, I went with the, uh, the front housing skids. So while I'm here, I might as well explain to you guys something about the Honda snowblowers and why it has this particular geometry on the front leading edge of the housing. So if we start at the bottom, you have this radius here along the bottom half of the, the auger housing. So what this does is actually allow hard packed snow to have easy access to the auger. That way it can be chewed up. If you had a typical, you know, 90 degree corner here, like your, most of your snow blowers out there that do not have this relief cut here, that's the same radius as the auger itself. So that leading edge, that 90 degree leading edge, will actually interfere with chewing up on like hard packed snow. So in order for it to get to that hard packed snow, it has to have it right underneath it. So that's the reason why this relief is where it is. Some other manufacturers also include it like Yamaha, uh, I think some Aaron's. Snow blowers have this feature where it's a radius cut in the bottom of the auger housing, but it's a very highly effective design um, and it's very purpose driven. So another feature is this edge right here, this leading edge in the housing above the tangent point of that radius leading up to the top here. 
So this is pitched back about five degrees, so you can probably see it on that, on that side better. Okay, so it's pitched back five degrees because it's like opening the mouth to the auger housing. Basically, when you have this drift breaker kit in full effect, all the way extended, when it's chewing on snow, the snow that it's chewing on actually falls into the housing right at the perfect angle. So if you didn't have that kind of extra clearance on the front leading edge here, having this whole kind of housing pitched back five degrees, it wouldn't work as effectively. You would have snow just falling over the top of the housing. So really quick, I'm just gonna give you some measurements of what the final height of the drift breaker is once installed on the Honda. Height of the housing is 23 inches, and height of the drift breaker tip is 32 inches. Well, everything came together really nice. I really like the, uh, the way it looks on this new machine. Very simple operation, and you can tuck them away within seconds. And uh, we'll see if I have to use it. We're pretty much done with the snow for the season, but you never know. We've had snow in March and May uh, in past years, so you never know what could happen, really. Well, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any Honda snowblower-related questions, please place them down below. On a side note, I'd like to also thank all the current subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to us small growing channels. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.